Before we begin, I would like to apologize for my use of a text-to-speech engine. I would have used a microphone, but the only one I own is of poor quality, and would likely make my voice hard to interpret. With that out of the way, let's begin the actual tutorial. Within the somewhat small community that is Freak Fortress, it's hard not to run into times where gameplay feels stale and repetitive. You hop onto your favorite server, only to be met with the same bosses you always fight, using the same strategies you always see, and wanting to add something of your own to spice things up. As a result, I'm sure we've all been there, you have the perfect idea for your own boss, and you can't stop thinking of how amazing it would be to play as your own creation. There's just one problem, you have no idea how to make a boss, or where you should even begin. Luckily, the internet exists, and after some looking around you found this tutorial. So sit back and relax, as I take you through the lengthy but surprisingly easy process of making a boss. To start off, there are some crucial programs that you'll need in order to begin the creation process. The first of these programs is GCIFScape, which is used primarily to extract MDL files and the like from VP case. The next program we'll be needing is Growbar, a neat little program used mainly to compile and decompile models. The version I use is an older one, so the UI will be different for you, but its basic functionality and the method used to operate it should generally be the same. The following three programs, while not mandatory for the basics of boss creation, are indescribably helpful, and as such, I highly advise downloading them. The Doctor's CFG Generator, while not a perfect program, more on that later, is great for getting a base CFG ready for the boss. Unless you already know how to write a working CFG, it would be in your best interest to download this nifty tool. Notepad++ is an all-around great program, and is useful for almost everything, even outside of boss creation. This is because of its various helpful tools and organizational capabilities, both of which are powerful utilities. In boss creation, it can be used in anything from the boss's CFG to even custom textures. Audacity is useful for creating custom sound effects for the boss which helps a lot in making the boss more unique than just taking stock voice lines and using those. And, while there isn't anything wrong with stock voice lines, a boss using custom sounds has more liveliness to it. Paint.net, or GIMP, if you happen to be more experienced with photo editing, are both used mainly to create custom textures. Deciding which one to use all boils down to experience. Paint.net is far more welcoming to beginners, and is simpler to use, but will often result in a lower quality texture. GIMP, on the other hand, can take some getting used to, but will ultimately reward those with the patience to learn how to use it with far higher quality in their custom textures. Now that you've got your programs downloaded and installed, there's one more thing that must be done before you can begin creating your masterpiece and that's to set up Growbar. To do this, simply open the application. Navigate to the Compile tab. Locate your Setup Games button, and set up your options like so. As I said earlier, your version of Growbar is probably newer than mine, and as such, your menus may look different. Do not be concerned, as the process for setting up Growbar should be nearly identical. If we reach a later step and Crowbar isn't working for you, your gameinfo.txt file is probably in a different location. Simply adjust your settings again so that the paths align with their respective files. Now that all of your programs are ready to go, you can begin making your boss. For this tutorial, I will be making this dude right here that I quickly threw together in loadout.tf. What should I name him? Let's go with... John. Now, 
In order to create his model, we will need to begin by creating a neat and orderly folder on our desktop named after our boss, so in my case, I'd name the folder John. Next, open up GC Ifscape and click this little button up here. Then look for tf2 underscore miscellaneous underscore dot vpk and open it. If this is what you see, you've done everything correctly so far. Open up the models directory. Next, we'll need to find the file names of every cosmetic he's wearing. But Lord Homicide, I hear you say. Does that mean we have to search through every single file in the entire models directory, checking every cosmetic that sounds like it has even the smallest possibility of being the one we need? Nope, because some kind souls who will now be serving as your new god figures have already done that for you. I present to you, the great list of item file names. Simply use Ctrl if to find the file names of your cosmetics. John here is wearing the wiki cap, a ruffled Ruprucht, the medical mystery, and a dashing little pipe and glasses combo named the nine pipe problem. To begin, I'll look for the wiki cap on the list. This one is simple, as it's appropriately named wiki cap underscore class, so because John here is a medic, it would be wiki cap underscore medic. Because it's an all class cosmetic, it would be located in the player items all class directory under models in GC ifscape. boom, there it is. Now, we'll select every file here containing wikicap underscore medic and drag them to John's folder. Open up crowbar and navigate to the decompile tab. I'll set the output to work folder, then I'll click browse and set the folder to John. Click and drag the MDL file of your cosmetic, so for me it would be wikicap underscore medic.mdl, into crowbar. Now, click decompile and you're ready to go. If you do everything right, there should be a bunch of new files in your main folder, just like I have a bunch of new files in John. You'll repeat this process with every cosmetic your boss is wearing, and you'll also do the same with the class your boss is. Class models can be located in models, player in GC if scape. Class models come with two animation MDL files. These can be safely ignored, as they lack any major impact on the models compile in the end. An important side note would be that most newer cosmetics aren't located in any of the models, player directories, but are instead located in models, workshop directories. With all of the models decompiled and in the folder, you're ready to start putting on your hats or coats or glasses or shoes or bells or whistles, etc. To do this, start by opening the QC for your boss's class. If you downloaded Notepad++, this is where it comes in handy, as it makes everything much easier to read. If you decided not to get plus plus, however, you can still proceed by using the stock Microsoft Notepad app. Albeit you'll have a slightly more difficult time telling what everything is. Unfortunately, putting on a few hats isn't as easy here as it is in real life. Though, once you have the pattern down, using SMDs to put everything on the model is quite simple. With your class's QC still open, you'll want to open up one of your cosmetics QCs and locate the body groups. Copy the body group into your class's QC. If your cosmetic doesn't have a body group, this is commonly seen in almost every form of facial hair in the game, simply duplicate one of the body groups from your class's QC and replace the original SMD with the one used in the cosmetics model. If your cosmetic has any LUDs, check to make sure they are all multiples of 11. If they are, 
copy them over to the class's QC. If they are not, they can be safely ignored. Then, find the CD materials in the cosmetics QC and copy them over to the class's QC. Copy the skin families over as well, as shown here. Be sure to copy the Involn FX for both red and blue underneath each cosmetic, as such. If there are no Involn FX, you will need to manually type them. Failure to do so will result in cosmetics staying red, regardless of which team the boss is on. Delete every skin family except for the top 4, but be extra careful not to delete the bottom bracket. Once everything else is taken care of, you are ready to compile. Go back to the top of the class's QC and edit the model name path to read Freak Fortress 2 slash the name of your boss slash the name of your boss dot MDL. As you can see, the appropriate replacement in my case is Freak Fortress 2 slash John Boss slash John dot MDL. Save your document and close it. Then, inside of your boss folder, create a new folder and name it Compile. Finally, drag your finished QC to Crowbar. Set the output path to work folder, and select your newly made compiled folder. Press the compile button, and if everything goes smoothly, your compiled MDL will now be located inside of the compiled folder. But before you can take a look at the pure beauty you just molded with sweat, blood, tears, and pure hard work, there's one last thing you must do. Navigate to your Team Fortress 2 directory, then bin, and look for HLMV. Attempt to open it. If all goes well, meaning it doesn't give you a game info.txt error, you should be greeted with a blank grey box and some fancy buttons. Click File, Load Model, and navigate to your MDL. Open it, and... Wait a minute, why is it red? This is because you are viewing skin 1, which is, by default, the red team's skin. Navigate to the Model tab, then select skin 1 under the drop-down menu. If it turns blue, then congratulations. You're ready to move on to custom textures. Alternatively, if you don't want to do custom textures, then double congratulations. The hard part, being the model, is done for you. If the model still appears red, that means you went wrong somewhere with the Involn FX. Try retracing your steps. Look at this beautiful boy. John is coming along pretty nicely so far, just as I'm sure your boss is as well. But, I'm sure he'd appreciate a fancy new look, as opposed to just wearing stock blue clothes, so I suppose I'll walk you through the process of making custom textures. Custom textures are a quick process to instruct, but in practice, they can be one of the most time-consuming parts of making a boss. First, you'll need to download VTF Edit, a program that I completely forgot to mention in the intro. It's mandatory for making custom textures, so it's quite foolish of me to have left it out, but I guess that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Next, you'll want to open both GCF Scape and VTF Edit. In GCF Scape, open TF2 underscore textures underscore da. This is where you'll find the VTF files, or Valve texture files. Remember the goofy looking medic you saw in the last title card? That's a VTF. Next, look for the VTF or whatever it is you're wishing to edit the textures of. It can be the class model, or it can be a cosmetic, but regardless of what you want to edit, their VTF files can be located in the same paths as their respective MDL files. When it comes to selecting which VTF to edit, you'll always select the blue one. If you are editing the class model, the same rule applies. Drag the selected VTF to a safe place of easy access, such as the desktop. 
Next, switch back to VTF Edit. Click File, Open, and select the VTF you just dragged. If all goes well, you'll see a bunch of weird shapes that vaguely represent the base model's textures. Click File, Export, and export it to the desktop as a JPEG. This next step is where your choice of editing software comes into play. I already gave a fair explanation of each program's strengths and weaknesses in the intro, but to reiterate, Paint.net is easy to use but results in low texture quality, whereas GIMP is more time consuming but is also much higher quality. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will be using Paint.net, due to its ease of use, which makes it more viable in a tutorial environment. This is, of course, the part where you edit the texture itself. Simply drag your exported JPEG into the software and edit away. When you're done, export the finished edit as a TGA. Import it into VTF Edit, give the texture a name, and save it. I will be naming mine John underscore coat, as I am currently editing his medical mystery. Next, go into GCF Scape and open up Miscellaneous Star again. This time, instead of the models directory, you'll open up the materials directory. Find the VMT file for your VTF and drag it next to your finished VTF. Change its name so that it shares the same name as its corresponding VTF. For example, because my VTF is named John underscore coat, my VMT would also be named John underscore coat. Open up your VMT in the text editor of your choice and change the base textures path to freak underscore fortress underscore two slash your boss's name, the name of your VTF. So for me, it would be freak underscore fortress underscore two slash John boss slash John underscore coat. Additionally, you'll need to delete the detail line containing file aid slow tiled. Otherwise your texture will appear darker and have a transparent fire effect placed over it. Then, navigate to your TF directory. Then, create a folder titled materials. Inside of that folder, create another folder titled freak underscore fortress underscore two. Then, one more time, create another folder named after your boss and move both your VTF and your VMT inside of it. My path would be materials slash freak underscore fortress underscore two slash John boss. Finally, open up Mecha the Slags Hex Editor. This is another crucial texturing program that I didn't include in the intro. However, this is because there is no web page for the program. A download link to the program can be found in the description below. Once the program is open, click File, Open, and open up your MDL file. You should be greeted with two columns and several rows, with the rows in column 1 containing the names of every texture used by the boss and the rows in column 2 containing blank spaces. These blank spaces are where you'll type the paths to the textures you've made to replace other textures. So for me, I would look for the file name of John's coat, being fall 2013 itchy investigator blue color, and I would type freak underscore fortress underscore two slash John boss slash John underscore coat into the empty space next to it. Next, save your MDL and preview it in HLMV. Set the skin to skin 1, and if all was done correctly, your custom texture should appear. Excellent work! You will repeat this process for every other texture you wish to replace. If the texture is missing, it likely means you made a typo somewhere or have your VMT and VTF in the wrong folder. Check your VMT and hex editor spaces for typos or bad paths. If I were to compare the process of making a boss to a full course meal, then congratulations. You've just finished the delicious, perfectly seasoned, and succulent meat of the meal. However, just like you can't have a full course meal without some veggies, you can't have a completed boss without making the CFG. Luckily, the CFG doesn't take long to make as long as you've downloaded the doctor's CFG generator. The next part of this tutorial will be centered around explaining the various parts of the generator, as well as how to properly use them. 
page 1 of the generator is fairly straightforward, but there are some elements to it that could use further explanation. The name box is, of course, the name of your boss. Simple enough. The next box is used to determine which class your boss is, scout, soldier, pyro, etc. Because a good friend John is a medic, I will select medic from the drop down menu. The next box is used to determine the model path used in the CFG. In order to make sure it is determined accurately, create a folder on your desktop titled models. Inside of this folder, create another folder named freak underscore fortress underscore 2. Inside of that folder, create a folder named after your boss. Then, drag all of your model files, excluding VTF and VMT files, into the folder. As you can see, the folder path for my model files is model slash freak underscore fortress underscore 2 slash John Boss. Then, return to the CFG generator, click browse next to the model box. Navigate to your MDL file, and open it. If done correctly, you should see the path to your model in the box. The next box down is used to determine the radius of the boss's rage ability, in hammer units. For example, if you give your boss a spook rage and set the rage distance to 3000, players within 3000 hammer units of the boss will be spooked. I'm going to be merciful and make John's rage distance something reasonable, like 4000. The next box is used to determine the damage the boss must first take in order to use rage. Obviously, you'll want to make this proportionate to the power of the rage. A weak rage that just spooks people within a small radius for 5 seconds would be best suited for a rage damage around 2000. A much stronger rage, say, one that gives the boss a rocket launcher with 20 shots and a massive blast radius, would be best suited for extremely high rage damage values, such as 10,000. I plan on giving John a weapon, but nothing that extreme, so let's go with something like 3,500. The health box is used to determine the boss's health formula. I highly advise editing only the main number inside of the brackets, as adjusting anything else could negatively affect the formula. I want John to be relatively tanky, so I'm going to increase his formula to 960. The speed box is used to determine the boss's speed in hammer units per second. The maximum value is 520. Because I want to make him a slow but powerful tank, I will set this to 320, which is below average. The next box is simple, as it merely determines the number of lives the boss has. I'll give John two. The companion box is used for when the boss has a partner, such as Seaman and Seal Death. I will be ignoring this, as John will fight on his own. The block voice box determines whether or not the person playing as the boss can use voice commands. If the box is empty, the boss is able to use voice commands, whereas a checked box means they cannot. Page 2 is fairly simple. This is where you write the description for your boss, which is the little box that appears on the left of your screen when you play as the boss. To write your description, simply type it out. To create a second line, simply type backslash n as I do here and continue typing. Be extra careful not to use quotation marks, as this breaks the CFG. If you absolutely must have a quotation mark, use two apostrophes instead. The next page is used for selecting your boss's weapon. The first box is always used for their melee weapon, but the rest can be other weapons. Let's start by identifying John's weapon. To do this, we'll click the weapon IDs and names button at the bottom and look for the weapon we want to use. I want John to use the Vita Saw, so we'll take a look at the menu. We can see the Vita Saw's index is 173, and its file name, or weapon class, is tf underscore weapon underscore bones or, so we'll copy those over into their respective boxes. Next, we'll add weapon attributes. Once you learn how to apply them properly, weapon attributes are capable of making some extremely unique play styles. However, John is a simple tutorial boss, so I'll keep things basic and just make him extremely strong. The next two pages are rather simple. While this page may look daunting and large, 
it simply allows you to choose which of the base abilities you want to use. To demonstrate, I'll show you how it works as I add Super Jump, a Spook Rage, and a new weapon on Rage. When adding new weapons on Rage, the process is nearly identical to when we added his melee weapon a while ago. The only significant difference is that you must also add the weapon slot for the new weapon gained by the boss. Primary weapons are slot 0, secondary weapons are slot 1, and melee weapons are slot 2. Toggling force switch to weapon determines whether or not the player using the boss will be forced to switch to their new weapon when they rage. This is useful for when you want new players to know that they have a new weapon, rather than forcing them to find out on their own. The next page is where you'll add the sounds for your boss. The process is similar to when we added the model, but instead of placing your sounds in model slash freak underscore fortress underscore two slash the name of your boss, you would place them in sound slash freak underscore fortress underscore two slash the name of your boss. In addition, it is extremely important that all of your sounds are MP3 files. This is because they are smaller than every other type of sound file accepted by TF2 which makes them quicker to download, and in turn, makes it so that server owners are more likely to accept your boss. Towards the bottom, you will see that two of the sound types require additional input. The first of these sound types is used for their abilities. This is one of the points in time where the generator is buggy. Do not touch the ability slot for ability sounds. Simply add your sounds as you would any other sound, and the CFG will be edited later to fix the slots. For music, simply enter the length of the music, in seconds, then add your background music. Do this for every music file you want to use. The final reel tab is used to add VMT and VTF files, if your model uses custom textures. Again, the path for your VMT and VTF files will look exactly the same as the path for your models and sound folders, but instead of the base folder reading models or sound it will read materials. Simply move your material files into materials slash freak underscore fortress underscore two slash the name of your boss. Click browse. Select all of your VMT and VTF files, and then hit finish. A window will pop up asking for you to find a folder to compile the CFG on. Use the desktop, and then hit compile. Hit recompile, just to be safe. And close the window. We aren't done with the CFG just yet, though, as there's still a little bit of editing to be done. Open that bad boy up in Notepad++ and scroll down until you find the sound underscore ability section. Check to make sure all of your sounds are correct. For reference, if an ability's slot is 0, it will play when the boss rages. If the slot is 1, it will play when the boss super jumps or teleports. Despite being an otherwise great program, the doctor's generator always seems to get these two mixed up, so they'll always need to be patched up. If you want to add some more cool abilities to your boss, you can find them on this page on Allied Mods. It contains links to a very large number of ability sub-plugins, which allow your boss to do far more than just the typical super jump or stun rage. As a demonstration on how to add sub-plugins to a boss, I will be adding an ability that temporarily increases John's speed on rage. If there are args reserved for the ability management system, I would advise deleting them. I personally have never been able to get the ability management system to work, and unless you find a fix, in which case, congratulations, they just clutter the CFG.
Once you're done, save your CFG and close it. Your boss isn't finished yet, though. There's one last thing you need to do before you can publish it. If you have access to a test server, or you are able to find someone who is willing to let you test your boss on their server, it is extremely important to test your boss. I have released many bosses in the past before testing them, simply because I didn't have the patience to wait to borrow a server for testing purposes, and almost all of those bosses were broken to some extent when I launched them. Trust me, if you have even the slightest opportunity to test a boss, do not neglect it. Now then. How does John work? Let's find out. As we can see, everything that's immediately visible seems to work. His description, his sounds, you name it. The textures are a bit crusty, but I will likely fix them if I ever plan on releasing John to the public. Do all of his abilities work, though? Yep, they certainly seem to be working. His super jump is functional, as is his rage, which gives him a temporary speed boost, a crusader's crossbow, and spooks enemies for 7 seconds, just as planned. He also deals a ludicrous amount of damage, as he was scripted to. It looks like he's ready to be published. But how should I go about doing so? Well, there are several ways to get your boss out there. By far. The best of these methods is to create a showcase thread for the monolide mods. For example, this is my old boss page. I can't use my new page, as it currently only has one boss, but this should give a good idea of how to construct a boss page. One method I've recently started using to make bosses seem more appealing is to create source filmmaker posters of my bosses. I am by no means a professional, as you can see, but they still look decent and do a good job of showing how the boss looks, as well as give some insight to the boss personality as a character. If you are the social type, it helps to talk about your brand spanking new boss in conversations with other people you play FF2 with. Getting in contact with server owners also helps. However, this is a double-edged sword, as talking about your boss too much may actually prove more harmful than anything, as it might annoy those who you're trying to appeal to. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Dear Lord, this thing took ages to make. Of course, by ages I mean about two days, but then again that was non-stop work and it added up to around 20 hours. I probably shouldn't have saved all of these text-to-speech lines to my desktop, either, because if you paid any attention to the state of my desktop, you can see that it gradually went from somewhat organized to total fucking disaster over the course of the video. Still, though, I had fun making it. If you haven't already checked the description below, that's where you'll find all of the links to the programs I mentioned in the video, as well as credits to the music I used. I hope I was of use here, and once again, thank you for putting up with my use of a text-to-speech engine. If you need any help, feel free to comment your problem below. If that's not reaching me, you can find me on Steam as Lord Homicide. Unless I haven't changed my name back yet, in which case you'll find me as the world is ending, John. So, for the last time I'll be saying it in this brief little outro, thank you once again for watching this video. This has been Lord Homicide, now going back off the air.